barbarians. For thousands of years, the fertile Yangtze and Yellow River valleys have fed, clothed and nurtured us. Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom marks the end of our journey through the history of city builders created by Impression Games. And wouldn't you know it, this one was actually made by Breakaway Games, a studio that's responsible for some other games in the strategic city building genre. They made the expansion for Pharaoh, Cleopatra, they made the expansion for Tropico, Paradise Island, they uh, they make a lot of serious games intended for government training, for military training. They have one name that I kid you not, My Herc Don't Work, which is about fixing Hercules C-130 aircraft. But back to the main subject. When it was released, Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom was criticized because it didn't really innovate all that much compared to its predecessors. That I can understand. This series sort of stopped really pushing the envelope after Caesar 3. Emperor is based on the same engine with the same kind of quirks, with the same limitations and the same basic gameplay that we've seen and the form it has had since its use. Where you get workers from pretty much anywhere as long as you place a building next to a road. But at the same time, it did actually innovate. Just maybe not as much as some people had hoped or as much as some people had noticed. Emperor was the first game in this series in this franchise to introduce multiplayer. You didn't play with everybody on the same map, at least I don't think you could play with everybody on the same map, though I have seen some maps that sort of made me wonder. No, instead you played each in a different city and you would not just be out there competing against each other and trying to conquer one another for the lols, as people from the internet 15 years ago would say. And instead you actually had multiplayer campaigns with objectives that you would cooperate to achieve. It wasn't a skirmish, it wasn't just a simple go kill that guy and win. You had to set up trade, you had to use each other's resources, you kinda wish that the multiplayer aspect was still functional online. The default server is hosted by Sierra are long dead, in case you're wondering, but it does still feature direct play and land play. I've only had the opportunity to play against myself with the AI because I don't really know other people that own the game. And of course, because it's online, you can't change the speed. It'll always be at a fixed pace, but you do have features like dialogue and uh, a few more options relating to the quirks that Emperor brings in to the fray. What's important to note about Emperor is that it stretches for the longest amount of time of any game in this franchise. People tend to forget this, but China is ancient. And I mean, pyramids level ancient. Then again, people also forget exactly how old the pyramids are. They just think Cleopatra built them or something. But the idea is that you start around 4,000 years ago. That's when the first campaign, the tutorial campaign starts and you have a version of China from back then. And as you progress through time, through the campaigns, you actually unlock different buildings. You unlock different ideas. You go from bronze to iron to steel. You go from venerating your ancients to to more modern, more established religions, more defined ones like Taoism or Confucianism, and each of them has their own set of heroes associated with them. They're not like the heroes of Zeus. They act more like gods, the gods of Pharaoh. You have to bring offerings to these heroes, to these folk legends, to these people. There is even Sun Tzu in there. And they will then come to your city. And as long as you keep paying them tribute, they will provide not only blessings that will increase the production of your buildings, but by being there they will reduce the cost of certain buildings and will act as a certain type of walker because again the walker system is in place and having one extra creature roaming around being able to do anything that a walker can do but being directable as in you get to choose where they go that can give you an amazing advantage in uh, building the city that you actually want to build even though you know the city you would want to build normally would probably not work it, it would catch on fire because you don't put buildings in the right places you just want them to look good, don't you? And yet, you could sort of still do that because the game also had the 
idea of enhancing buildings depending on how beautiful they were. Some buildings, if you actually got the appeal in the area to light up, would evolve. You can then turn a simple rundown well into a fountain that has two carriers instead of just one. You also have the Feng Shui, which is a game's way of telling you where you should actually place buildings so they would gel well with their scenery, with their elements. It doesn't influence the efficiency of the buildings, I don't think it does, but it does influence how the people perceive you, if they like you more or not. So some buildings will need to be placed closer to certain types of terrain features. Some of them have to be near water, some of them have to be near trees, even near rocks. And you may be wondering, well, I don't want to build my city next to some rocks somewhere far away in the corner. Well, here's where the game throws a few uh, curveballs. I honestly don't remember the previous games having so many rocks just randomly placed around the map. Like little clumps of rocks. The kind you would somehow wish you could delete because it sort of just falls right in the middle of where you wanted your production center to be or your distribution center or a big building to be but you can't they're always gonna be there and if you place the right buildings next to them they will be green meaning they will have the maximum amount of feng shui I, I honestly don't really know much about feng shui but it's in the game and it's not a big thing it's it's a little thing but it's there it's culturally appropriate not to be confused with cultural appropriation that's a whole other thing and through the ages you will see the evolution of the civilization quite well you will go from living in huts from building small shrines to the ancestors to constructing an astronomical clock now i don't actually think the clock has a use in the game other than being a monument whereas it did have an actual use in real life when it was built around a thousand years ago it was a pretty accurate clock that allowed for some very precise astronomical predictions but as a monument it's a simple thing it's a small tiny thing the monuments that you truly get to have fun with in this game aren't the ones that you can build on an open play map sadly well Technically you can because you are able to use pretty much any map in any campaign as an open play map to do with them as you would see fit. And on some of those maps you'll find things like Grand Canals or you know the Great Wall of China that you have to build. And they're not small feats, you will construct cities just to build these. You will be tasked with some of the most ambitious and greatest civil engineering feats in human history. It does take a well for you to get there in the campaign but you will get there and at that point i would say that thematically it does start rivaling pharaoh and hey even the floods are back only the, the floods aren't actually good here you, you don't rely on floods to grow rice you have irrigation for that and for the most part in the majority of maps you do have enough water to actually grow pretty much anything you want without issues you don't ever have floods because the ancients get angry and flood the nearest river or lake and you just lost half your city and you have no idea what to build back because none of the rubble is actually marked with anything with this used to be a dot 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 nope if it is i missed it ember also adds something that i complained about in the past and that is gates that to let you actually decide which people can get through and which can't but it's not something built into the roadblocks it's an actual gate that is tied into the wall system the aesthetic wall system that you can construct to separate one region from another in terms of beauty so you can now have a storage area right next to a residential area and just place a wall next to it so the people don't see that uh, they're a bit sort of looks like crap and they'll be happy you also have expanded features when it comes to your interaction with other cities you can spy on them they can spy on you you can capture their spies you can turn them over or you can get them to work for you though this is more of a random event you can even look at the layout of a different city though this is more of a multiplayer thing where you can actually select from which point you want to invade in terms of difficulty i would say it's a bit better than zeus zeus just felt too too easy too simple it's probably because i 
figured out how to build cities easier there than in Pharaoh because of the way things worked with the walkers. Emperor, however, adds a bit of an extra challenge with the way that food influences exactly how your buildings evolve. Your people will want different types of food, many diff many, many different types of food in order to actually evolve, which was not the case in the previous games unless I'm mistaken and if I am please mention it in the comments, but I don't really remember it being so in the last ones. It's a bit of a longer journey to get to the maximum point possible. And the people also have specific requirements for their culture, not just any culture. They want musicians, they want to have acrobats at a certain time, not just anything. That makes you build a city in a different way than you would in Zeus, right? Just through an L shape and then connected the rest to, you know, form the distribution network. It was a simple thing. Enjoyable, yeah, absolutely. But this, this is more of a challenge. This is more work. It requires more planning. There's more chances of things going wrong and a better sense of accomplishment when things do go right. There's also a bit of a randomness to how the missions progress. Not just because, you know, you could anger the ancients and they will uh, stomp your buttocks, but also in the way that you interact with the neighboring cities. Some of them will, if you didn't time things right, refuse to trade. And if they do it when you're really in need of trade, you will absolutely lose a mission. It's happened to me a few times actually. I just went bankrupt because I couldn't find a trade partner to sell all that ceramic that was just flying about doing nothing. And you will have a lot to do in Emperor. Not just because the campaigns that you have by default there will stretch through about 3000 years of history, but also because there are quite a few custom campaigns that people seem to enjoy. You do have a competent level editor and an improved campaign editor, more than Zeus had. And again, you do have the option of multiplayer if you actually have someone to play it with. Visuals are a bit improved compared to the previous games, but in the grand scheme of things, it still kind of looks the same. I think it does scaling better with the resolution, so everything isn't as tiny as it would be on 1080p with the custom patches. This is the game I've played the least in the series so far. I've only owned it for about a month or so, and yet it's one that I find myself enjoying quite a lot. It offers me some of the ease of use of Zeus, but at the same time, that feeling of accomplishment when you succeeded building something grand, like Pharaoh did, accomplishing something truly great. So if you skipped this one up until now, I do encourage you to give it a try. It is absolutely worth it as part of that series that Impression Games and Breakaway Games gave us decades ago. Next week's show, I was still waiting for an email to drop but since it hasn't, I may be going ahead with a dead game no one's played. A bit of a different one because there's no actual gameplay footage of the game. So I'm, I'm gonna be splicing in things from the previous month of shows for reasons that will be easy to understand. There's for Caesar 4 or Children of the Nile or maybe Tropica 2 and some other city builder games. I guess I could reserve next February for them as well. Unless, you know, something horrible happens and I can't do this show again next year. Let's hope I can. Goodbye.